Hey everyone, I finally got the top of this sun oven put together. Uh, and in this video, I want to show you how I did everything. Uh, and then we're going to actually get on to the, the actual testing of this and making sure it works uh, pretty comparable to the All-American Sun Oven. Uh, before we get into that, though, I want to go over a couple of changes I made since the, the first couple of videos. Uh, the, first, the first couple of videos, those ways work fine, uh, but I just made some changes to try to get it a little bit more efficient. So let's get into that before we go into how I put together this top. All right, so here is the final product, the solar oven, DIY solar oven. And today I'm going to go over how I completed the top of it uh, and then finish everything up. And then we're going to actually get out and test this thing. Uh, there are a couple of changes that I made uh, from the original couple videos. The first one, uh, you can see the reflector panels. I used aluminum instead of the mylar, the wood uh, with the mylar backing on it. Uh, it, to me, the, the, I mean, the, the other one works great. It works just fine. Uh, but this works a lot better. The other sun oven, when I tested it, um, it was about 325. Uh, it got up to about 325, which was about 25 degrees less than the sun oven. So I wanted to try these as well as the fact that these are just a little bit more durable, uh, with the mylar, there's the possibility of the mylar coming off or the zip ties breaking. Uh, with these, I used... Uh, the hinges with some rivets. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, just a couple rivets. I'm also going to put another hinge on the bottom of these. Uh, but this was a little bit more expensive than the other way, but either way will work. I also uh, did change the plexiglass out for regular glass uh, because I had a feeling that over time the plexiglass was going to get, after getting heated up in the sun, it was going to start to warp and create you know, gaps around the seal there. Uh, but, you know, again, it, it, it would work just fine with the plexiglass. Uh, the only problem with the glass is that you have to cut it, which is fairly easy. Uh, and then you've got to be careful not to break it. Otherwise, you've got to buy it again. So uh, one last thing, and I'll get into how I, how I did the top, was on the back here, um, I put the foot on. And what I did was just got a piece of tin uh, and shaped it around a one by two kind of made the foot just like the sun oven. I put some holes in that tin so I could adjust uh, how far that piece of wood goes up into it so I can adjust the angle of the solar oven. I may paint that, I may not, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into how I put together the top, uh, the, the frame around the outside, the glass, the seals, the hinges, and those uh, um, adjustment guides there. All right, so what I did was started with this outside frame, uh, and I used oak for this because it's just a prettier wood, uh, but it is a hard wood. So when you put the screws in the four corners here, make sure you actually drill a hole first for that screw to go in, or you absolutely will split the wood. Uh, with this, I used 45 degree angles, uh, a little bit, you know, kind of a pain, especially if you don't have the right tools. So you can just use the straight um, edges if you want. Uh, I always make things harder, it seems like, than they have to be. So, uh, again, just make sure you're drilling a hole into that before you put the screw in. And just like we did on some of the other ones, you can over drill the top of that hole to make sure that screw goes in flush. And then after that, I just sanded everything. I uh, use a really fine grit sandpaper, make sure and get all the edges, all the, uh, the rough edges and all that out, because after this, you're going to apply some stain and polyurethane. You want a nice clean surface. Uh, so just make sure and sand everything nice and good. And then with the screws and the, the corner pieces, uh, the corner, the seams, I put some stainable wood filler in them. And what this stuff is, is it's not like regular glue or, or uh, wood, like wood glue and stuff. You can actually stain over this. You can still tell a little bit, uh, but it's not near as as glaring as without th without that. And I made sure and filled in all the crevices and the cracks and all that stuff. Then after that, I just got a clean cloth and started applying the stain to it. You can use whatever color stain you want. With this stain, um, it, it's a kind of a darker color. So I just wiped the stain all over everything. If you want it even darker than this, you can wait for that to dry and then apply, apply another level of stain. Uh, with this also, I didn't bother, you know, waiting to do the back. 
because the back is going to be underneath and I figured it doesn't really matter what it looks like. The top is the most important. So I did both sides, even though the back is sitting on that table. Uh, and then again, if you want to apply another coat, um, just sand it down a little bit with some fine sandpaper and apply another coat. And then with the polyurethane, uh, what I did was applied one coat and then I, I did two coats on this. I applied one coat to uh, the top edge and the bottom edge. Like I said, the bottom doesn't matter all that much, but the top edge you want to make sure it's nice and clean. Then after this dries, you have to let it dry for about eight hours. Then you sand it down and do another coat on it. And then while I was at it, I figured I would do the box as well, give it a, a more finished coat. Uh, and it also will help that sticker stay on there. So in six months from now, uh, that sticker is not starting to peel off. Uh, so I did all four sides of the box. And again, you wait eight hours and then you apply that second coat. But it really gives it a finished look, a really nice look when you get the whole box done. Now with the plexiglass, what I did was cut this. It needs to be 16 and a half inches by 16 inches because this, this level right here where it goes down, it's gonna be a little bit longer uh, than the sides are going to be. So you've gotta make sure you've got that extra half inch. Uh, plexiglass, just make sure and cut it real slow and you're gonna be fine. It's not going to crack or break on you. But like I said, I switched this out to glass. Uh, it's up to you. Now this picture right here is, is the plexiglass with the protective coating, the protective layer on it. And what I did was on the outside, I just put some electrical tape on there uh, to kind of seal those edges in, uh, the sharp edges and all of that stuff and make it look a little bit better. Uh, with the glass that I switched this out to, I did the same thing. Now with the gasket on the outside, what I ended up doing was just taking some double-sided tape and using the, the gasket on top of that because the gasket is really thin. Uh, it's a high heat gasket, but it's really thin. So this gave me a little bit thicker of a layer. Uh, and I'll have all the links and everything in the article to what supplies I used and all of the dimensions. Uh, and the, the backing on this, the, the gasket, isn't all that, that strong. So the, the uh, double-sided tape gives it a little bit extra adhesive. And then I just did a couple staples in each of these pieces just to make sure it's going to stay where it's supposed to stay. Uh, and it's still going to be there in a year or so from now. And I did that with, I did three staples on all four sides, got those all done. And then it was time to put the plexiglass on and get those hinges on there. And what I ended up doing with the hinges was using a piece of the same board that I use for the reflector panels and a piece of double-sided tape. With those two together, it was a perfect fit uh, level with that piece of glass. So it would open and close and it'll sit on that seal perfectly. And then with that little piece uh, stuck to the double-sided tape, you can drill straight into it. It's not going to move around on you or anything like that. Just drilled the four holes into the, those two hinges and put little screws on the outside hinge that goes into the wood. Now the glass I had to do a little bit differently. Uh, what I did was I had to score the plexiglass. Uh, I don't know if you have to or not, but I scored the plexiglass to give, I used super glue and to give that super glue a little bit extra surface area I scored the plexiglass to make sure it was going to seat there and stay on there uh, pretty good. It actually worked really well. The super glue doesn't work on the glass though, and I'll go, go into that in a later video. Now, with after I got that on, I decided to attach the top. And what I did was just the four corners of the, the top frame. Uh, I drilled, make sure you drill the hole first and then put the screw in. But I drilled a hole into four, the four corners of the top frame and then put that... Uh, those screws in there. Now, I suppose you could um, do all of this before you put the polyurethane and the stain on, just get everything in its right spot and then disassemble everything. Uh, but I did it afterwards and uh, it looks just fine. And with those hinges, everything, everything looks good. The seals there, everything's good. Now, the next part is applying the locks. And what I did with these was I just used three washers to bring it up to the level of the, the glass or the plexiglass. Uh, and then just cut a few pieces of wood, uh, maybe a half an inch by one inch, uh, however big you want them. And then just fasten those down to, their, to where they're just tight enough on that glass. It holds that glass down on that, uh, that gasket. And then I added a, a bead of caulking around the outside where I put that top frame on. Uh, this was, I didn't have a very good caulking gun, so it was a little bit tricky, but uh, you just want to make sure that's closed in there 
And then after I did uh, this, put this caulking on, I actually used some of the same spray paint, uh, that high heat spray paint, and sprayed it into the top of the can, and then used that with a brush and painted over that, that seam. And then what I'll probably do is add another layer of that, that uh, polyurethane on there. So this is the oven so far. One thing I didn't mention in the video is this piece I put on back here. I just put four screws in this. This is kind of a temporary piece right now, but I wanted to fasten these solar panels on because when it gets a little windy, um, they're gonna fly off on you. So, and you don't want that. So um, I put that piece on. Now I need to put a couple hinges down here to keep these straight, but for right now, uh, it's pretty good. Another thing that I didn't show in that is these these two uh, adjuster guides and the handle right there. Now I didn't drill any holes in the glass here. Uh, what I did was just use some some glass glue basically. It's like a silicone caulking that will that adheres to the glass. Now maybe in the future I might need to um, you know put a few holes in this, but for right now I didn't want to have this piece of glass and then break it trying to drill holes in it um, with these adjuster guides i used a piece of fence that we have for our horses that it when, when you look on the inside it's got the perfect dimensions for these little adjusters guides it's got one that i can use for all four sides like this one then it's got another one that i can use to put those out right there and with the handle i did the same thing as the the hinges on here i just used some glue uh, to glue that on there. We'll see how long that lasts. So what I'm going to do, it, now that we've got this all finished, I'm going to test it and compare it with the All-American Sun Oven. Uh, I'm hoping this will get up to about 350 degrees. That's what the Sun Oven uh, typically gets up to depending on the day and the time of year and all that, but uh, I'm going to compare this side by side with the Sun Oven and see how those temperatures compare. I'm probably going to cook some bread in it. Uh, and see how both of these work. I have no doubt this will work. I know with the version with the Mylar uh, solar with the panels here, the it got up to about 325, so I'm hoping this one will get to 350. But uh, with with this, this, this project is done. If you guys have any questions, uh, like I said, all the dimensions and all that stuff are gonna be at DIYprepping.net, uh, the article there. But if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, and until the next video, we'll talk to everyone later.